Hello and welcome to another build video. This video is going to follow the process as I build for the next challenge on the Tabletop Crafters United Discord. Uh, the last one was wonderful and I really enjoyed what I made, that uh, diorama that I did. And the fact that I won just kind of topped it all off, but I was, would have been proud of it, whatever, because the competition was superb. And if you have not yet checked out the previous two videos in this playlist, then please do. There is a build video of my Durin's doorway, diorama and then following up from that a really cool video where I show off all the other uh, entries for the t for the challenge uh, and there were some su superb ones so yeah go check that out this challenge uh, is not gonna uh, it's not gonna be done very quickly it's quite a long time um, we've got until the end of the year so the end of December so there's no rush however I've actually realized that I kind of need what I want to make for another project and other reasons so I'm going to get started a bit earlier than I was expecting. The challenge is to do a display board, a small display board for my photographic miniatures on. And what I've decided to do is take the Oak and Iron 1 to 600 scale ships and make a display board for them which is going to be obviously pretty basic. It'll, I'm thinking about a cliff uh, with a few rocks and a choppy sea front, so another water-based one. <laughs> um, but it's what I want, it's what I want to have, so I'm going to make that first of all. I may end up making more and doing a roto and uh, entering multiple builds, but for now this is what I'm going to do. So I'll get the camera pointed down, I'll show you what I've bought. Uh, I have a little display box and I'll show you the, the ships and uh, yeah, then we'll get started on the build. So here we are. Those of you that don't know, Oak and Iron, you can see the box at the back here, is a fantastic game uh, by Firelock Games. They have a, dis um, a Kickstarter going right now as it happens, but obviously that will be long gone by the time this goes live. Uh, and um, yes, yeah, so, and I backed it and when it arrived it was brilliant. Um, and I've been putting together, and there are videos elsewhere on my channel, um, for the ships and other terrain and what have you that I've done for this game. And what I'm going to do for this, like I've said, is I'm going to be uh, making a display board inside this case which can be very very small so what I've got is the four ships I've done so far are inside there with their cards so I can remember which one's which um, and there's actually six this is this display is going to display the core ships there's six uh, ships two of which I haven't yet painted up so I'm going to need to make a display board that fits in this I'm going to have the cliffs at the back and I'm going to have just the sea in front and uh, I'm going to have a space for each of these ships. So let me just quickly show you this. So at the bottom, underneath each ship, we have two little, um, uh, two pieces which actually slot onto a base. Now the bases are actually quite big. Um, I haven't got one to hand, they're inside here. I'll dig one out um, now, one second. Okay, so I've got myself a base out. As you can see, they're quite large. And if I was going to have six of these, I'm not going to be able to position them in a very interesting way. And I'm not really actually going to get any C because it'll all be the base. So I'm not going to have the bases on this display uh, board. I'm just going to have little holes so that each ship can sit into its position. And obviously each ship will be, it'll be the specific size for the ships. I'll have to carve around it and make sure I leave the gap correctly. So that's the idea. So the first thing that I'm going to do is get a base made and it needs to be very accurate because this needs to slot down over the top. So the cliffs can't bend backwards and forwards, they must be absolutely 90 degrees and the base that I'm going to build on must also fit exactly within this space. Uh, I'm going to use the same technique as I did on my previous build which is the toilet paper water because that worked so well uh, but I'm going to do it much more aggressively obviously because it's going to have actual waves and white tops so the painting is going to be a lot of fun um, and uh, hopefully this is going to look really really nice. So I'm going to get started on that. I'll gather my materials together, clear this away so I don't damage anything and I'll bring you along for the next step. I have my blue foam. I'm going to do it on this again. It worked really well last time and what I might end up doing is beveling the edge up um, so, that, um, so, so that it's a little smoother so it's not taking up quite so much of a front um, and make it so that the waves are coming out of it. It may end up that I don't end up using this, this might just be the first attempt but it's certainly going to give me a chance to practice. So what I need to do is I need to measure this very accurately and then cut it very accurately to make sure that it's going to look, going to fit in there. So I have a plethora of new rulers 
safety cutting rulers. I'm pretty pleased with this one. It uh, lifts up like that so that you can keep your hand out of the way when you're when you're holding it down, which is really good. Um, I'll pop a link, uh, if I remember, in the description below to uh, where I picked this one up from. And what we're going to see is that the length of this is exactly 240mm and the depth is just a millimetre shy of 16, so 159mm. So I have a good 90 degrees on this corner I think, I have a good 90 degrees on this corner, so I'm going to go from this corner here because I'm pretty confident it's 90 degrees and we're going to measure along a mark at 240 exactly. So let's grab a pencil just over here, already had let out, 240. There we are. And then I'm going to take my 90 degrees steel and I'm going to draw a line up there. Like that. Okay. And then what we need to do is we need to measure 159 up this side. Those of you who have watched this channel a bit will know that measuring to the millimetre is not really my style. But in this case, I do think I have to. I'd rather make it a little bit too small, because I can dress it. There we are. And then we'll check along that line and make sure that that is 240 which it is. So now, with my nice 60 centimetre long safety ruler, not the other one will, will, will stop being used, but I do like this one. Now we can cut along that, and we'll, we'll cut all the way across. As always, not pressing down too hard, and then we'll cut down this line. There we are. So what we should now find is that the top, which is over here, fits on that. And it does. Look at that. Well, I'm going to sit and stare at this for a little bit and work out whether this is actually the material I want to use or whether I want to pick something a bit thinner. I have some um, thinner um, XPS which I could potentially use. So I'm going to sit and stare at it and make that cool. But at least I know now that I can cut accurately enough for this build um, and I'll bring you back when I come to the next step, whether it's going to be using this or with the next cut piece, a different cut piece. I changed my mind about four times then. So let me talk you through the process and I'll show you what I've got. First of all, I went to look for some of the thin black XPS that I use quite a lot. And on the way, I remembered that I picked up these tiles. Now you can see they are actually textured. Uh, and I realized that they look quite a lot like quite a troubled sea, but not massively troubled, but I see that these sorts of ships would, be, would look really good in. So I picked it up and I cut it out with the edge on the back because the blue foam that I previously cut can then sit on that and that would be a cliff and it would look really good. Apart from as I studied it, I realized it wouldn't look very realistic. So I may come back to that idea with the cliff at the back and I may end up using this for that. As I say, I have other ships for oak and iron to do display boards for, so maybe I'll do that. But I basically threw away that idea briefly and I've come up with this. So I've cut out from the same material but without a back and this will just be water with maybe a couple of rocks at the back and the ships will be able to sit on this and uh, they will look really good. So let me just grab uh, one of the ships and put that on there so you can see what it will look like. The next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this to the base. So you can see, there we are, one ship. Obviously it's a bit off kilter because it's got the little knobs and I will have to make holes uh, so that it can fit in. Um, and I'll put uh, a wake on what have you so uh, it will definitely be uh, drawn around uh, but that will be done once I've prepared this a little bit better so what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue it down using gator glue to the base and leave it to dry um, and then what I will do is paint it all black including the sides 
um, very carefully. I'll mask off the base so that I don't get the paint on the base. Um, once that's done, then I'll be able to start to work on the fitting of the ships um, and put in the um, the detailing paint of the water up, maybe put some wisps in and build some of these waves up a little bit with some resin or what have you. Uh, but I think this is going to be a really good start and a really good basis. So yeah, let's get that glued. So my gator glue is very, very helpfully just a hand. Don't you love it? And I'm managing to keep this one a lot tidier, he says. Hopefully a lot tidier than I did the previous one. Um, so let me just get that cleaned a little bit and I'll be back in one second. There we are, Gator Glue is brilliant, but no matter how hard I try I seem to get it clogged. This is what I've just pulled out of the nozzle um, and uh, that's really frustrating because I've been really, really careful with that and cleaning it very carefully. Uh, I think just the lid just doesn't fit on very well, so I may have to look for an alternative once I've used up this. However, what we're going to do is we're going to glue this in place very carefully and I'm not going to go near the edges because I do not want this to spill out the edge and ruin my base. I probably really shouldn't be using Gator Glue. All these concerns you've got for how you use it. This may not be the best tool, but there we are. It's what I've got. So I will clean that before I put the lid on. And what we'll do is we'll set that on very, very carefully because once this is glued, it will not be for moving. So make sure that really is sat in the right place, not hanging over anywhere on the base. There we are. And then what I'll do is I'll grab a couple of weights and I'll weight it down. And then we're done for now. I'll come back to this tomorrow once it's dried and do the next stages. But it's nice to get a start on it. There we are. This has dried well, so what I'm now going to try and do is mask off the edges. Now, this masking tape isn't looking very good, so hopefully it's going to be sticky enough. But I'm going to very carefully come along and mask in like that on each edge. Stick it down very, very tight, as tight as I can. And then once I've got it stuck there, I will fold it over to give it a little bit more stability on that stick. There we are. So I'll go around and mask each of the sides and then I'll bring you back for, for the next step which is going to be painting it all black. There we are, so that's masked off. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with my terrain paint which is just black paint mixed with PVA and a little bit of washing up liquid um, and I'm going to paint that all over the whole thing. So this is for two reasons, one of which is to give it a good base and the other one is actually just to give it a little bit more uh, uh, support because the, this sort of polystyrene is a bit kind of fragile and I want to make sure that it doesn't all collapse on me. So I'm going to come around and give this a good good solid painting like you see um, and then I might actually end up doing two coats um, and then we'll start to build up the water and start to work on the effects and making sure that we have space for all of the ships etc. So I'll get that done and I'll bring you along once it's ready for those next steps. So I've put two or three coats of the black terrain paint on this. What I'm now going to do is come along with some dark green and I'm going to paint that all over as well. Um, now this will obviously hopefully eventually be completely covered because I'm going to put the texture of the water on it. Um, but this will mean that if there's anything that I miss at least there's a little bit of a base colour. So I'm just going to paint it with this green. I could conceivably mix some brown in with this. Uh, but I just want this to look like the depths, so if I miss anything when I'm doing the waves, then then it's not looking uh, horrendously bad. So I'll get that done. I think only one coat will do it as well, uh, seeing as I've done the black so solidly. Um, and then we'll come to start doing the texturing of the water. The point being that the texture on this is probably just not enough and not sufficient for what I'm looking for. Um, so we're going to have to build up some, some waves, but that's cool because that's going to be fun. So I'll get this done and then when we come to that stage, which actually probably isn't the next stage as it happens, but when we come to whatever the next stage is, I'll bring you along. I now come to the next and um, a little bit of a fun part of this build. 
So what I need to do is I need to mark out on my water where I want to have each of the ships. And I want to have it so that they can slot in nicely and they can be inside the uh, waves and what have you. And I have an idea of how I'm going to do this. And I don't know if it's going to work. <laughs> so we shall find out. As we've established, on the bottom of each of these, there is a little knock which goes into the base and the base is too big. So what I'm going to do is a multi-stage process. I'm going to get some paint and I happen to just have some of my raw rubber. And I'm going to dot the paint onto the bottom of these little watsits, whatever you want to call them. And I'll wash it off again when I'm done. And then I've got some cardboard here. This is some of the pedigree. <laughs> Cardboard. And what I'll do is I will drop the ship, the boat, down and mark those two areas. That now tells me where I need to put a hole. So I will basically cut out. You are actually watching me do this for the first time, by the way. So I will cut out that area there, rather larger than I need it which is a bit of a waste of cardboard, but I have quite a lot of this at the moment. And then I'll smudge it because I'm an idiot. Don't do that. So we'll put that, we'll do that again. A little bit of a dab of glue or of, the, of the paint on the bottom. And then press it down onto the cardboard like so. Okay. And then I'll wait for that to dry so I don't smudge it again. And then I'll bring you back for the next step and I'll dot out the uh, other uh, five ships while I'm waiting for that one to dry. That's dry, so now for the next step. And that involves a braddle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press through in the centre of each of these dots and do it so that I get as wide as the dot. There we are. So that's that done. And then what we can do is we'll come along with a little ship and that should now sit, and we may need to make the dots a bit wider, which I think we do, but that now will sit in there once we've made the dots wide enough. There we are. Come on. Yep, that now sits inside our little bit of cardboard. And so what we can now do is we can draw around the hull and then cut that out. So I'm going to do that and then I'll bring you back to show you what it looks like when it's finished. With the shape cut out, what I can now do is select where I want the flute to go. Let's say I wanted it to go there. And then what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to glue that down in place. Um, I'm not going to glue it now because I actually want to paint these black, I think, so that when they're in there, they're a little bit more camouflaged. And then as I come to build up around it, I will have six shapes of these um, boats on here, or the ships on here, which I can keep clear of any kind of uh, uh, waves. And then I can build up the um, uh, wake as well and then when I come to put these in I'll have be able to slot them in place and uh, pull them out very easily without causing me any kind of hassle. So that's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to carry on and get that done for all the other boats now, all the other ships now, uh, paint them up black and then stick them in place and I'll bring you back for when I'm sticking them. As you can see I've finally got these shapes all stuck in. These two are the two ships we haven't yet done. Um, and what I'm going to be doing now is the technique that I did on the Watcher uh, diorama um, during the doorway using toilet roll and watered down PVA, which I got from Marklin from Sweden, who is one of my favourite YouTubers. And I'll try to remember to link somewhere up the top of the screen, wherever, when I put this out. But I might forget, but either way, he's awesome. If you search for TV, uh, if you search for toilet paper, water, you'll find it. So the way that it works is, is that you paint your PVA on your surface. And I've got a good base here because I um, picked the correct type of um, foam, of, of um, not XPS, white foam. Uh, but it's not just not quite choppy enough for me really. So what you do is you paint this on, you don't have to paint it all the way over. I'll do a little section then I'll get the rest of it done off camera. Um, so you paint on your PVA unfortunately the uh, water-based 
paint underneath is getting reactivated. So anyway, then what you do is you get your sheets of toilet paper. And because this is so small, I'm actually going to do this in small sections because otherwise it's going to go over the top of the ship shapes. Ship shape, yay. There's a pun. So in this case, I'm going to be tearing it out and folding it a little bit just to get it around the ship shape because I really don't want it to cover that. So it's going to be a little bit more fiddly than if you don't have that. But then once you've done that, you come in with some more PVA and you paint it over the top. And that's it. And you build that level up and up and up until you're happy and you're ready to move on to the next step. So what I'll do is I will build up this lever, this layer, and then I will bring you back in for when I'm about to do the next step. But basically what you're trying to do is obliterate all sides this was ever toilet paper. So get rid of the joins, get rid of any bits of things that looks like paper, um, and just smudge it around a lot. And keep layering it up. So I will do that and I will bring you back in for the next step when I get to it, which won't take me very long, but yeah, I like this technique. I'm having so much fun that I almost forgot to bring you back in then. So what I'm doing is I'm working on the wakes of the ships. So let me show you how I'm going about that with the sloop. So first of all, what we do is we put a little bit more of the uh, toilet paper just around the back of the sloop where we want to have the wake, because the sloop is moving in this direction, moving away, you can see where the front of it is towards the S. So then what you do is you get your glue and you wet the paper down as you have done for the waves. And again, you're trying to obliterate the edges. So make sure that when you're doing this, it doesn't look like there's a sheet of toilet paper there. It just looks like continuous waves. So once you've got that nice and moistened, what, you do, what I'm doing is I'm coming in with the brush and my finger just to make two kind of like ridges running away from the stern of the ship. Like that. And that's it. We have a wake. So I've already done that on a couple of the other ships on the brig um, and whatever that one is. Um, the uh, one, one that's still being painted down, down below. Um, so yeah, so I've, I've done a bit of, um, I've already done a couple of them, I'm going to finish the rest off um, and then I'm going to let it to dry before I paint it. Now, one thing to say here is I'm going to leave this for at least a couple of days to dry because it does take a little bit because uh, there's quite a lot of uh, liquid on there. Um, unless, of course, I do light the fire tomorrow, in which case it might dry quite quickly. But yes, I'm quite pleased with how that's looking now. So once again, I didn't turn on my microphone. <laughs> so what I'm doing here is I'm going to finish off the paint job on this display board for my oak and iron ships. So I'm using the same mix as I do normally. I've got the raw umber, some dark green and some blue. Mix it together to make a really nice deep green with some tinges of brown and blue in it, which is just what I like for my sea. And what I'm going to do is basically paint it all over the base that you have there and uh, try to avoid as best I can, though I don't do a very good job of it, the cardboard where the ships are going to go because uh, I want them to remain clear so that I can see what ship I want to sit where basically to remind myself. So I'll just slap this paint all over it. This is dried overnight, which I didn't expect it to. I thought I would have to wait until this evening to get this stage done, but that's not a bad thing because now I can do the final step, which is painting in the tops of all of the waves. So all I've got is some white paint. Uh, and I won't do all of this on camera because it's going to probably be done through the day. Because, yeah, I don't, I don't have all that much time right now. I just wanted to get started. But basically what I'm going to be coming in and doing is not quite dry brushing, but certainly not putting very much on. And just picking out all of these tops of all of these waves and particularly where I want the wake to be. Uh, and one of the reasons why I'm going to take a little bit of time doing this is because I want it to dry so I can see how it looks. So I'll just do a little bit at a time and then come back and add a little bit more, a little bit more. It's going to be a very patient task, this. It's going to take a little bit of time because I don't want to ruin it now. Not this close to finished. But yeah, we're basically just going to be picking out details like that. So let me just zoom that in. 
There we are, you can see the effect that I'm going for. Just the top of all of these little bits. It doesn't want to be a dry, a dry brush because that would be too over the top. So I'm really picking things out very carefully, specifically highlighting where I want to highlight. And yes, so that'll look really good. So I'll get that done and I'll bring you along to show you what it looks like when it is finished. And here we have it, finished. And uh, I've already tested it with all of the ships in it and it works really, really well. So you can see that the effect of the, of the waves is just perfect. It's really, really come out well. And then keeping these spaces for the ships has also worked really well. The plastic top, which is just here, fits on perfectly. And I am really, really pleased with the end result of this build. So yeah, great job. I'm gonna make another one now. Another build done and uh, in plenty of time. Well, I say plenty of time. It's halfway through December when I film this. So I'm about halfway through the final month of a three month build. And really I should have finished it within a day or two because it's a very, very simple build. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope that you've learned something from it. And please do let me know in the comments below. Uh, either way, I do love to hear from you. I'll pop some pictures up after this of both it empty and with the ships in it. And I hope that they are nice and you enjoy seeing those. And as I always say, please, Stay safe, stay well, and stay healthy.